Some parents have expressed worry over the postponement of the West, Af West African Examination Council's May-June examinations for senior secondary students across the country. Though they said they understand the current situation brought about by the global coronavirus pandemic, they are, however, regretful that students and words will be forced to lose one academic year as there is no end in sight to the pandemic. The exam is not conducted this year, which means the students cannot graduate. And by application, they have to carry it over next year. And by doing that, those who are supposed to come to the next class, in fact, there's going to be an arrangement whereby we either have the two sets to write the exam the same year, but there's no way you can deprive the other that's not progressing. Otherwise, if you have vast negativity, it's going to be an aftermath effect on all the educational sectors, not only the wise students nowadays. If people are afraid the admission into higher institutions, and you know JAM has conducted the exam, their results are out, but they cannot admit any students now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Just a kind of indefinite suspension, but I think they will still have to write it, probably this year, but I'm not sure, because they want to see how the, they want to see how they will be able to flat the curve of this COVID-19 uh, 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 pandemic, so that from there, government can take a decisive decision on what to do about uh, education, especially writing uh, both internal and external exams. If the exam is not conducted this year, which means the students cannot graduate uh, by application. Joining us to discuss this is an educationist, Dr. Peter Oguduro. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. It's my pleasure to join. How do you see the move to postpone the 2020 May-June exam that ought to have started um, early May? Well, I, I, I do not... I do not think um, it's, it's illogical. Um, the people who are making those decisions within the corridors of government are probably prioritizing our health and lives above um, schooling, which is not unreasonable. And uh, this is not peculiar to Nigeria. Indeed, I, I have confirmed that um, a good number of countries have um, gradually started getting their children back into the classrooms. But Nigeria lacks the capacity at the moment to protect lives while getting children into classrooms and providing them good quality education. For you to get children back into the classrooms, you need to put any things in place. We haven't got that infrastructure. We haven't got the manpower. The teachers have not been trained to be able to operate at that level. Uh, I did a part of my doctoral program in the Scandinavian region, and I can see that they are uh, taking their children back to the classrooms. And I know why they're able to do that, because they have the infrastructure, they have the technology, they have the value system that enables them to um, succeed at that level. Uh, if um, the government here succeeds in improving the quality of infrastructure across all schools in Nigeria, then it may be reasonable to start thinking of getting the children back into the classroom. But yeah, I must confess, you have to be alive to go to school, you have to be alive to chase certificates. And these young people, by reason of the fact that they are young, may not die because they return to school, but they can contract coronavirus in their classrooms and, and bring those things home and spread it among adults uh, in, their, in their families. And of course, uh, you have a lot of people who are living with obesity, um, uh, uh, cancer, uh, uh, you know, diabetes, and all kinds of um, underlying health conditions that can promote uh, the kind of agenda that coronavirus has. Okay, so, so we shouldn't be in a hurry yeah. to get the children into the classrooms. I, I, I know the value of education. I have a PhD in it, and so I cannot say because of my education that children should go back to school. If they all die and their family members die, then education would have become useless. Most parents, um, like yourself, or even though they understand the need for the postponement, are also bothered about the instability in the calendar and the fate of these children. What are the implications when we... Because another set is supposed to come before this set, um, after this set. What are the implications, long-term implications, of such a decision to move the um, exam? That's fine. Uh, so um, the point we have to recognize is that um, certificate is not everything we are looking for in education. And as I have already indicated, we have to be alive to write exams and get certificates. And we can think outside the box. In proper countries um, at this time, they are uh, de-emphasizing certificates. In, in Britain, for example, children are going to get into the university without having to write A-levels. In, um, in America, 
Um, SAT is not an exam they are very uh, insistent on writing and conducting at this point in time. Uh, the unfortunate situation in our country is that it has to do with the fact that we have not always run our school system in such a way that we can trust the exams we conduct internally. Uh, if we have had a system where you can trust the assessments of, of, of classroom teachers, we could use the transcripts that come from schools to take um, you know, children to, to, to the next level. Because um, if we're able to do that, then we can, we can worry less about the issue of they are not going to write exams. Education is not about writing exams all the time. We have made a lot of mistakes before now, and we think we can correct all of that, you know, just by getting our children to write exams. We are actually going to compound our problems. So the point I'm making in effect is that we shouldn't worry so much about Waek, Neko, and Jam. That's not what education is about. Education is about empowering individuals to think properly and discover opportunities and make right, you know, the right contribution toward the development of their society. But, we but haven't done that education for, has you know, to follow. There has to be some sort of structure for it to be relevant and useful. There has to be some structure. Now that has been disrupted uh, completely. What may be um, a, the use of online examination, going to take exams online, be an option uh, to consider so that... Um, we don't lose out completely when it comes to trying to keep some semblance of sanity uh, with the curriculum that we have. Um, how, just basically, what other ways do you think this sort of delay can be managed so we don't lose out completely? Yeah, it's not impossible to reopen schools even, you know, within the next two weeks. I can help the government to sort out that. But having said that, let me make it very clear that Nigeria lacks the infrastructure, the value system, to be able to conduct exams online. We will read it, children will get A's that they cannot defend. So nobody should start thinking along those lines. It hasn't worked for us. Even when we do you know, our regular things, we still produce children who finish and they have first class in universities, they can't defend their certificate. They come out with A's in school certificate, they can't defend their certificates. So dismiss that idea. If you have the evidence that I have as a researcher in the industry, you will, can't do online exams in Nigeria and trust it. It won't work. It will become another Luwole that which most of you are very familiar with. But we can think outside the box and do things very differently. What we have to do to be able to get children back into the school, which we can achieve within the next two weeks, is to be very radical you know, in the way we go about it. But we must carry all stakeholders along. We haven't done a lot of educa edu ed ed educating the parents and uh, the, even the government officials and uh, even media people like you on how to ensure that our children go back to school and uh, all of us will stay alive. Until we're able to put all those kinds of things in place, we shouldn't think of sending our children back to school because that would be the way to, 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 to get one out of every people in every family uh, you know, into the grave uh, in a hurry. And that's right, not what Dr. you want. Peter Ogudoro, always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and we hope to have you in the studio soon. It's my pleasure.